Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We are going to talk about binary to decimal conversion. And we're going over this because the better you understand binary and how it relates to decimal and converting between the two of them, the better you're going to understand IP, ad IP addressing as a whole. So this is definitely a worthwhile investment in order to get to the point where you don't really even need to think about binary anymore. Okay, so let's jump in. We have an IP address here expressed in binary, all 32 bits. And we know that 8 bits equals an octet. So if we were to break this IP into its four octets, we can just draw lines every eight bits. And there we have it. Octets one, two, three, and four. We're looking at binary, and the binary numeral system is sometimes called base two. And all that means is there are only two possible values when you write something in binary, either a one, or a zero. That's all that base two means. Now we're looking to convert this binary into decimal. And the decimal numeral system is also called base 10. And all that means is there are actually 10 possible values in order uh, when you're using decimal to express a value. And you're very familiar with these values as, these, uh, these values as well. It's zero through nine and everything in between. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Those are all the possible values in base 10. So when we look at this binary number, and we can only express either a 1 or a 0, you might be asking yourself, well, how do you express a large number other than 1 or 2 or 3 or 8 even with just being able to use one in one and zero. I mean, you, you can add them all up in the first octet and you would hear you have four ones. So is, is, is it four? Well, the answer is no, it's not four. And so let's jump into how we actually convert it. Let's look at octet number one first. So I'll draw it out here. One, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero. That's the full octet number one. Now, each one of these bits, the position actually has a value. And you determine the value by looking at the powers of two. So binary means base two, right? Only two possible values. So if we, we can figure out the value of each one of these positions by looking at powers of two. And so what, how it works is you start on the right hand side. And you start with 2 to the power of 0, which equals 1. And then you increment. So 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. To the power of 3 is 8. To the power of 4 is 16. To the power of 5, 32. To the power of 6, 64 to the power of 7, 128. You can see they double. That's If, if you have a calculator and you can bring up a, a scientific notation on there, you can play around with 2 to the power of anything you want um, in order to get a, a, a feel for this. But these values here on the bottom relate to each one of the positions. So position number 1 on the right hand side has a value of 1. Position number 4 has a decimal value of 8. Position number 8 has a decimal value of 128. Position 5 has a value of 16. I'm just circling a few of these so you can actually see them and how they're related to the to the different bit positions. Okay, so now that we can see how the corresponding decimal uh, value is related to the bit position, now all we have to do is figure out what the ones and the zeros mean. So let's bring up a different picture here. And we had the same IP address on the top there. And again, we're just going to break up this IP into its four octets. I'm not going to number them this time because by now you should know the order of the octets. And let's look at octet number one again. So we have one, zero, one, zero, 
one one zero zero. Now, a one means on, and a zero means off. So when we're looking at bit position number one here, it has a zero in it. So think off, and also think don't count it. So when you think about its related value, if there's a zero in the bit position, just don't count it. Don't even think about it. However, if there is a number one in the bit position, then you need to find out its its decimal value, and then we're going to count it. Okay? So position two is also zero. So we're not going to count it, and we can just put a zero down here. So far, we have zero plus zero. We have a one in the third bit position, which equates to four. And since it's a one, we believe we should count it. It's the on position. So we write down here plus four. And we'll do the same thing with the next position here, because we can see there's a one in the fourth position. It equals eight. So let's add eight. And so we keep doing this. We can see the fifth position equals zero. The sixth position is on, 32. 64, we're not going to count because there's a zero there. And the last one, we are going to count, 128. So now we know out of all the possible values in each bit position, we know we don't have to count all of them. Only a few of them are relevant. So if we were to add all these up, 128 plus 32 plus 8 plus 4, our answer is 172. And that is how we determine the value, the decimal value, of the first octet, 172. And you can see the, the octets 2, 3, and 4 are actually much simpler because there aren't as many ones, there aren't as many values to count. So just by looking at these, we can actually do this pretty quickly. We can see 16 because this is in the fifth position, and we know that value is 16. In the third octet, there's only one bit position which has the one in it, and that's the first one, which equals one. So that's easy to do. And then in the last octet, there again is only one bit position that has the one in it, and that is the third bit position, and we see that's the number four. So we have just completed converting binary to decimal. It's that simple. Let's do another example. So you can see again, I have the decimal values written out. By the way, these never change. So if you are having any trouble with, you know, uh, computing the values of, of two, two to the power of four, two to the power of five, well, you can just memorize these and write these out each time you need to convert a, a binary uh, uh, number. Um, over time, though, you'll find the more you do this, um, you're just going to automatically know the decimal value for e each bit position. So let's take our IP address and let's mark off each of the four octets. And we'll begin with octet number one. So here we have two bit positions that have a one in it, which means we're only counting those. And it is position number three and number four. So if we count over, one, two, see, one, two, three, and four, we know eight plus four equals 12. So our first octet equals 12. If we look at the second octet, we have all zeros except for two bit positions. And those are the fifth and the sixth positions. These are the fifth and the sixth positions. So if we add those together, we have 48. Now the third octet is kind of interesting. There are no ones in there. So what do we do? Well, quite simply, we, what we technically do is we look at each bit position and we actually associate a zero with each one because they don't have any ones in there to correspond to any of our decimal values. So if you do that, there's no point in doing that because you, you would know that zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero equals zero. So the third octet will equal zero. 
And then if we look at our fourth octet, we have two ones and or rather two bit positions with the one in there. It is the first and the third. So the first and the third, one plus four equals five. Okay, so memorize this decimal value for uh, each bit position. And it always starts, it's always listed this exact same way, starting on the right hand side and incrementing to the left. And again, there are a total of eight of these because we have eight bits in an octet. All right. Okay, well, to summarize what we covered, we know that binary is base two. In other words, there are only two values we can express, a zero or a one. Whereas decimal is called base 10. In other words, we have 10 values that we can express, zero through nine. We're interested in decimal because it's easier to use. Now each bit position has an associated decimal value. And I've written those out here, starting on the right hand side, 1248, 1632, 64, 128. They are always the same, so memorize them or just write them out each time. And so in the beginning, all you have to do is write your binary number um, next to each one of its corresponding uh, decimal values. And then we talked about uh, ones and zeros being on or off. If there's a one, consider it on, and then you need to count the associated decimal value. If there's a zero, then think of it as being turned off and you don't have to count the associated decimal value. Once you've gone through that, you just add up all of your values in decimal and you'll have your final number to represent the octet in decimal. Okay, so that's it. Practice, practice, practice. This will get much easier the more you practice. And that is binary to decimal conversion. Thanks for watching.